Hey guys and welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to try and replicate the halftone effect uh, you see here in Marvel Snap. Okay, so the first thing you'll need to do is open up Unity and uh, this is a URP project. And the other thing you'll need to make sure you've done is if you go to Window Package Manager and just make sure you've got Shader Graph uh, installed. You'll just need to go to Unity Registry here and just make sure it's installed. And if it's not, uh, just click on it and install it. And if we just search Shader Graph, and as you can see, it's already installed on this project. So the first thing we'll need to do is create a new material. So if we just right click and create material, and we'll just name this Half Tone Matte. And if we also just right click, create, and go to Shader, URP and then Unlit Shader Graph. And we'll call this Halftone Shader. Okay, and if we open up this shader, um, the first thing we'll need to do is create a UV node. And we're going to plug this UV node into a, let's see, a multiply node. And we're just going to multiply by how many times how dense we want the effect to be. So here I'll do 50 by 50 by 50. I think the W and Z components won't matter at all here, but I just did it anyway. And then we plug this into a fraction node. And then from here, as you can see in the preview, it's basically created a 50 by 50 grid. And then I'm just gonna plug this into an ellipse, eclipse, ellipse, no ellipse, that's the one. So yeah, we just plug that into an ellipse node. And then from there, we'll plug this into the base color. If we give it a quick save, go back to the scene. If I just create a plane, uh, rotate that so it's facing us, that'll be minus 90 in the X. Cool. And if we also assign the shader to our material, half tone shader, and then put that on. So as you see, um, so far we've got the grid of dots. Um, so that's halfway to what we're looking for. Um, we're just gonna have to f find a way of filtering it down so it's not covering the whole thing, and that should be pretty simple. Um, we can add color. So if we add a color variable and just name it color, we can pull this out and then it would just be a multiply, plug in the uh, ellipse node, plug that into the base color. And then if we pick a color, anything we like really, we can go blue, maybe purple. Um, Preview's not going to show us too well, but if we go back here, this is what it will look like, and we can change it to whatever we like, essentially. Uh, the other thing we want to do is, um, the next thing we'll want to do is make it so it's not covering the whole grid. So if we just take a UV again, uh, if we just split it, so what we're doing here is just grabbing one of the color channels, so if you don't know what a UV is, basically it's green in one axis, red in another, and then the green and red together make yellow. So if you split one of the colors out, and let me just put into a preview for you, like green, what you get is a range from uh, white at the top and black at the bottom as it goes from more green to less green, essentially. So what I want to do here is actually put it into a power node and then probably increase the power ever so slightly. Maybe 3.2 will be good. And then just make another multiply node. If we just pull all this back a little, plug this into here, and then plug this into the base color. Now, what we've got is a very simple effect where it's fading away at the top and then at the bottom it's fully there. Now um, one thing you may notice with what we've done 
is it's actually getting less bright as it goes up because we've simply just multiplied it. But generally in a half tone effect, it, it, the colors will always remain the same level of brightness. So if we go back to the shader, there's probably a better way we can do this. If we just plug in this multiply node back and have it how it was, and what we'll do instead is use the result of this power node and we plug it into the width and height of the ellipse. And then this, this node here can be deleted. If we go back to the scene, uh, we'll see a slightly different effect where instead of it fading away, the dots are getting smaller as it progresses up the axis. And again, we can adjust the power as we please. So we go here. Uh, 1.9 and as you can see the effects a little bit stronger um, Now to give it a bit of life to give it a bit of an animation uh, What we can simply do is just go to time Let's multiply the time so it's a little bit slower And what the time node is doing for us here is just giving us a number that increases over time So if we plug this into a tiling and offset node and do it in the offset uh, it's basically just going to offset a texture for us. Uh, we're going to plug this into a simple noise texture. Uh, 500 is probably a little intense, but maybe something like 20. And then if we were to multiply this, I'll plug that into the B and I'll plug this into the A. And then we've multiplied it put into the uh, base color and we go back to the scene and as you can see here it's very subtle but there's an animated effect going on here as it's rippling across the screen and what you can even do if you want to fully replicate the effect we can duplicate it rotate in the x so would this be 90 uh, pull it up And then there you have a kind of similar effect to what you saw in Marvel Snap, where at the top, top and bottom you had two half tone effects and then a small bit of noise going across to give it an animated feel. And you can adjust a lot of the numbers you're dealing with here to get larger dots, smaller dots, have the gradient be harsher or less harsh, have more noise affecting this. But essentially all these nodes, all these numbers can be changed to whatever you need. But the essential effect's pretty simple, very easy to replicate, and you can use this in lots of creative ways in your own projects. If you enjoyed the video, please give a comment, like, or subscribe.